Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite nerdy 50-year-old Uncle Gardner. I guess. <laughs> okay, today we're going to talk about uh, the SolarWinds hack and how the open source community is dealing with it, or the repercussions of it, the, the ripple effects, uh, because it was kind of a big deal. I mean, last year, if you didn't hear about this, and if you're in our community, you probably heard about this, but it was discovered that there were Russian agents who had actually hacked into tens of thousands of uh, machines, if not hundreds of thousands of machines across the United States and the world. These machines were running SolarWinds proprietary uh, software stack called Orion. Basically what happened is that these Russians were able to gain access to the SolarWinds uh, cryptographic certificates and were able to deploy them, uh, were able to deploy updates to Orion that were uh, not intended to be deployed by Orion. These software updates that came from the Russian hackers basically gave Russian hackers backdoor access into both public and private networks, including the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, uh, the Treasury Department, and several other, uh, other government institutions. According to Microsoft President Brad Smith, this was, quote, the largest and most sophisticated attack the world has ever seen. Some IT professionals have even called it uh, IT's Pearl Harbor. This is not an exaggeration. Some 18,000 of the 33,000 total Orion customers had been compromised by the Russians. This left gaping holes in network infrastructure in the public and private space. And initial reports put the estimated cost of damage because of this attack at some nearly $100 million. In response, CTOs and security specialists have been racing to secure their uh, uh, software supply chain. And this has proven a little bit difficult in the open source world, but hopefully it won't be difficult for too much longer. Because on Wednesday, the Linux Foundation announced a, a new project called SigStore. It's a free service meant to provide uh, open source developers and IT professionals with the confidence of a cryptographically secure open source software supply chain. SigStore will give developers the tools that they need to sign things like container images and binaries and release files of their projects into a tamper-proof public log. Because of the scope of this project and the associated challenging with managing projects like this, uh, there aren't many other competing projects in the open source world. And that has been a huge problem. But because there are many uh, people at the Linux Foundation, including like member companies that the, have taken the reins on this and, and need something like this, they, the Linux Foundation has taken up the mantle of this. Quote, securing a software deployment ought to start with making sure we're running the software we think we are. SigStore represents a great opportunity to bring more confidence and transparency to the open source software supply chain. John as executive director of Let's Encrypt. Now, what is this? I mean, how is this going to work? And that's a good question. Now, if you've ever been on a website that provides uh, an MD5 hash uh, next to like the download button of, let's say a file, a program, maybe an ISO that you are intending to download, you can actually take that hash and double check to make sure that, you know, the file wasn't corrupted as you were downloading it or that there wasn't some man in the middle attack that replaced the file that you downloaded with, uh, you know, a malicious version of that file. And that's fine. I mean, that works on like a one-off basis, uh, but going around the web, crawling around, trying to find those MD5 hashes just doesn't work at enterprise scale. Not to mention MD5s are not cryptographically secure in any way. Um, they are really just to verify that you have the correct data that the server intended to send you. MD5s also rely on the site to actually present you with the correct hash uh, and it's all done in a very manual and pretty much inconvenient way if you're doing more than one file you need to check. At enterprise scale, it's just not feasible to rely on something like that. Uh, this is where SigStore comes in. It's going to give open source developers the tools that they need to provide cryptographic signatures for the software that they create and then let those signatures be referenced by IT professionals to determine that the software they have is the software that they intend to, to run. 
Now, one of the nice things about this uh, is that it will allow you to compile binaries from source and make sure that the binary that you received after you compiled is one that the developers intended you to have, giving you both peace of mind and a secure bill of materials, as it were. Now, how will this affect end users? And I think that's a great question. As it stands right now, SigStore is still in preliminary stages. They're working on it. But given time, this is going to allow distributions to sign their releases. And it's going to ensure that the uh, software that the distribution provides in the distribution's repository is going to be verified as original, authentic, uh, coming from the original creator of the, uh, of the project. And that's really awesome. This is going to be a free service that's available to all open source uh, devs. And I think that that's great. Quote, SigStore aims to make all releases of open source software verifiable and easy for users to actually verify them. I'm hoping we can make this as easy as exiting Vim. And that was Dan Lorick of Google's open source security team. And uh, yeah, that's pretty funny. Now, Google is involved uh, and so is Red Hat, but don't put your tinfoil hats on. Uh, I think that this is a really good thing. The uh, Red Hat, Google, all of the other people involved in SigStore have the means to actually build something like this that's going to be reliable, that's going to be good for the open source community. And uh, so I'm very excited about the potential here. And we can trust them to do something uh, in this area. Google, you can't trust with your privacy, but uh, this is not going to affect your privacy at all. So this is a good thing uh, for the open source movement. I'm very excited to see where it goes. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Let me know down in the comments. I wanna give a special shout out to Systrom, one of the, uh, the uh, I guess the only uh, top tier super user members of the YouTube membership program. So thank you Systrom for your support. It's truly appreciated. I wanna give a special shout out to my patrons. If it wasn't for them, I would not be able to do this. Uh, they have empowered me to, to, to make this show the best that it can be for you guys. And so I really appreciate uh, all my patrons over there. Uh, same with my channel members. If you if you are a channel member, if you're a patron, you make this show possible. Thank you so much. If, if you believe in the work that I do uh, and you're not already a member or a patron, you can become a member or a patron by heading over to patreon.com slash the Linux gamer, or you can hit the, the join button down below. Um, you get your name listed uh, over here uh, on, the, on the screen. Uh, if you hit uh, the $8 or more tier uh, or the $7.99 or higher uh, channel member tiers. So uh, thank you so much for being here. I very much appreciate your time. Uh, and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a blessed day.